know, whenever I'm guiding somebody or even just driving down across the Channel 2 bridge, you know, every time we pass by, somebody's always, what are those? You know, that, that's the most common question. And there's an incredible story behind it. And it's also become a great fish habitat for us. Yep, he's looking at it. He is looking at it. I wanted to try it more for the permit than for the Goliath. Got him. Got a permit? Got a permit. OK. Oh, wow, look get at off that. The, get off the trolling motor. Go backwards. Quick, 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 quick. He's going to take me to the thing. Hey, Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. So I found these Goliath grouper um, just hanging out around the bunkers there. Uh, it was interesting. We were out there um, looking for lobster. Um, yep. When we moved into our new neighborhood there, we started uh, looking around. Um, started trying to find some lobster spots close for the kids. It would be easy to dive and, you know, looked at that and figured, oh, man, there's got to be lobster around there. It's kind of a bridge structure and there's um, all kinds of crevices. So we, we jumped in there. Um, my little boy Reed, he was about five at the time, and I remember diving down with Reed to look under there for lobster. And I look under that bunker there and there's a whole bunch of these giant goliaths that came right out looking at us. Big old goliath grouper. And, uh, and so I always wanted to try to, you know, catch them there. You know, I knew they were there, wanted to go check that out and try it. And there's also permit to hang around those bunkers. There's um, barracudas, there's, you know, just, just a, it's a great little, um, you know, artificial habitat right in the middle of a, a very productive channel. I've always wanted to fish here. Been by here a zillion times, but never actually spent any time fishing right here. Cool spot. Um, that we yeah, tarpon absolutely. lined up here in the spring. There's a ton of history right here, too. This is where they poured the concrete for the auto bridge. The bridge we drive over now, that was the, the uh, train, and this is going to be an auto bridge right here, 1935. 1935. Labor worst Day. Worst hurricane of Isla Mirada history, right? Yeah. They, they didn't even name storms back then. It was just, they just called it the, the Labor Day storm. Back then, they didn't even know the thing was coming. Yeah. You should start seeing them now. It must have been 25 years ago, I saw a television show, and I can't remember what show it was, but they were fishing right around those things, and they were catching permit. And so when I first drove into the Florida Keys, I saw that stuff. I'm like, that's it. You know, it's right off the road. You can see that. So I wanted to try it more for the permit than for the Goliath. So when we went over there, you know, I'm thinking, all right, well, before we just go set the anchor and, and sit for a while and try these Goliaths, let's kind of ease in there slow and see if we can see one of these permit. Oh, wait, I got one. I got one right here. He didn't like that. He's going the other direction. See what happens. Maybe he'll come back around. That was a big one. We see several, several whoppers. I mean, really, really big permit. And uh, I see my share of big ones, but those may have been even bigger than anything I see in the Marquesas really? regularly. There were some really big ones there. And I'm standing up on top of the tower looking down, so I'm getting to see them. And you were exactly right. You, you said, you know, these things are kind of weird. They're not acting like regular permit. They just kind of sit there. You can touch them with the end of your fishing rod. It's kind of hanging off of that little piece of structure that all comes up near the surface there. And the glass will hang right under the edge of that mold. I too. bet they will. Here's 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 one right here. Get down. Come on. It's that same fish I saw just a second ago. That's a really big permit. That is a really really big permit. Like 40. Exciting man. That's that's a really big one. I'll just take you around. They, 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 ninety percent of the permit hang around this thing, either side. I'll just take you. That one that I saw was loop around. the man. Yep, there's some giants. I'm good, man. You can go as fast as you want to. He's going right Hold between on. the two pilings. Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K, 
the only key you'll need. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. By Lowrance, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. And by Fraybill, Buff, St. Croix Rods, and Quantum. What I found really cool about, about that day was just the ability to go out there and catch a couple fish in an area that just holds so much history. I mean, you know, it's not just an old abandoned bridge. It's an abandoned bridge that, that happened because as they were building it, a hurricane comes through. You know, what was that, that hurricane was in what? 1935, and it was right on Labor Day, um, Labor Day hurricane. Mm -hmm and um, they had just gotten that far along. They were just starting to build. That was gonna be the auto bridge. Yep. You know, whenever I'm guiding somebody or even just driving down across the Channel 2 bridge, you know, every time we pass by, somebody's always, what are those? You know, that, that's the most common question. What are those, what are those? And there's an incredible story behind it. And it's also become a great fish habitat for us. There's um, Goliath grouper living on there. There's permit that, that live there around that, um, that structure. It's a, it's a great fish habitat with an uh, incredible history behind it. So, uh, you want to go ahead and try to get one of these glass or what? I don't know. You, you don't think that the permit are on any of these other things? It's not worth looking around? I, I think that I've never caught a permit here and I've tried it a few times, but not to say it's not possible. I mean, I've hooked them. I'm not saying we could do it. But well, let's hook them. I wanted to try it more for the permit than for the, for the Goliath. So, when we went over there, we had just enough sunlight at the time to where we can look around and try to see a permit. We see several really big permit, 35 to 40 pounds. But you were saying even that you have gotten bites before, but they run you into yeah, the Yeah, that's the hard part is, you know, I've, I've tried it a few times, they're always there. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less. Seems like the beginning or the end of the incoming tide. Um, after the clean water's moved in, kind of the end of the incoming tide, I see them right there and I've hooked them there. Um, but man, I've never landed one. Got him. Got a permit? Got a permit. Okay. Oh, wow. Look get at off that. The, get off the trolling motor. Go backwards. Quick, 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 quick. He's going to take me to the thing. I've got the bale open. Which way you want me to go? Around this piling. Quick, 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 quick. Full speed. I saw him. He looked big. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Go towards the piling. Look like you're out in the open. See what I did there? I just opened yeah. the bale. Want me to go straight? Just go straight for the edge of the bridge, the end of the bridge. Last year we were fishing that wreck where we caught those permit, the wreck real close to the Marquesas. And, and instead of just pulling so hard on him, you actually opened your bale and let him swim further away and into where he kind of didn't go to the wreck, he right. went out in the open. Right. Um, and you landed a really big one doing that, mm -hmm. where I was putting as much power as I could on those light rods and, and he got broke off. So it was curious, you know, I was I was curious to see what, what you could do with a permit there because I've never landed one. Right. Uh, wait, we need the big motor, dude. Maybe. Towards channel two? Yeah, go a little left now. He's headed back over that direction. We're doing good, man. We're doing really good. Just keep going straight right here. Back off the drag there or, or open your bail. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw him going straight towards channel five. You were out yeah. in the clear. And I'm thinking, wow, we're in good shape. Yeah. And I heard you even say, you know, oh, yeah, I'm walking him like a dog. You know, you, I guess you're just trying to steer him in mm -hmm. that direction. And it looked like it was going really good for a yeah. while. Headed back that way. You want me to go to him? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to have to go to him. All right, I'm going to him. I'm good, man. You can go as fast as you want to. He's going right Hold between on. the two pilings. He's got me wrapped on something. Keep going. And feel something coming across the line. He's in it. There's a big lip. He's in it. You know, as with anything that, that is a great technique, it works, you know, 90% of the time, every time. <laughs> and uh, that guy turned around and, and he went right through the middle of those two things and he was headed out the other way. I mean, man, I don't know, man. I, I, get, I don't think the only way I'm going to catch this fish is to jump in there. Whatever you want to do, man. You, He's got me all wrapped up in there. You think if you, think if you got there. down on the bow and tried to get your rod low, it might make a difference? I don't know. He got me in there. I had him out. Hold, hold your rod or are you good? Let 
me just nose this up in there? Yeah. I mean, he's, I've filled fish. He's, just, he's taking off running. If I could get him away from this, he's way out there. Yeah, I thought you were about to jump in the water I again. was. I was about to go. I really was. I, I would have done it really easy, but, you know, I started thinking about, okay, i got to get this mask on, and by that time... Wait, something came off. It came off of something. It came off of something. I think maybe he might have broken off. Dang it. I think he broke off. Dang it. <laughs> That's been my experience. They're hard to get out of here. <laughs> that was pretty exciting, though. The 1935 hurricane was a Category 5 hurricane up until just uh, Hurricane Joaquin, which happened last year. It was the most powerful hurricane to ever strike North America. Winds as much as 200 miles per hour, an 18-foot uh, storm surge, tidal wave washing over the upper keys, and it was responsible for uh, almost 500 deaths, pretty much wiped clean this area. Unlike today, where we have Doppler radar and we have you know weeks of, 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 of news information, in 1935, they did not learn that the hurricane was coming for the Matacumbis until the very day of the hurricane. So at one o'clock, the official weather bureau gave the report that there was a significant hurricane coming across the Matacumbis. Now in 1934, 1935, Flagler's train wasn't bringing as much tourism down to, the, to Key West as they intended or once thought of. And one of the impediments was the trip from Miami to Key West required a 40 mile uh, automobile ferry ride from Lower Matacumbi to No Name Key. So what they wanted to do was build a solid bridge system that would eradicate the need for that ferry system. And about 1934, early 1935, FDR's plan was to you know, get people back to work again. And uh, one of his projects was to have the veterans come down to the Florida Keys and help build that solid bridge system. So with the influx of all these veterans coming down to do this bridge work, we essentially doubled the population of the Upper Keys. There was lack of communication between the ferry workers and what they thought it would take to get a rescue train to come down. And by the time they arranged to have a, a, a rescue train to come down and evacuate the veterans, it was 4.30 before you know, they, they started to assemble crews to get, again, a holiday weekend to assemble the crews to get the, the locomotive engine fired up. On the way down, they encountered an open drawbridge that delayed time. A large steel cable had fallen across the tracks and that got tangled up into the train's wheels. That again uh, delayed the train by another 50, 60 minutes. The train arrives about 8, 8.05 and by, at 8.25, this 18 foot wall of water comes crashing over and knocks over the train and of course things got serious very quickly people were whisked up in the, in the wind flung away you know some of these people were were blown across uh, Florida Bay in fact one woman ended up on Cape Sable she was blown all the way across to Cape Sable some 40 miles away and these people some of these bodies were not found for you know four weeks six weeks eight weeks later in the aftermath of the storm the governor at the time made the call to have all these cremation sites up and down the island. And there were in excess of 20 cremation sites from Plantation Key to Lower Matacumbi. As a result of that, there was the Florida Keys Memorial, kind of known as the Hurricane Monument today. You know, it kind of pays tribute to all those who lost their lives in this storm. And the crypt there is filled with a lot of the ashes of, of those people who perished in the storm. Now, as you go over Channel 5 Bridge, you'll notice out in the water, there's a series of eight uh, concrete blocks out in the water. And what that was, when the veterans were here building that automobile road to, to eradicate the need for the um, automobile ferry, they were, they were building a road that would have paralleled Flatters Railroad. And those bridge piers, which is what they are, this is the only evidence that those veterans who lost their lives of, of the work they were doing. Those were actual bridge piers. The first bridge would have linked Lower Matacumbi to what is today known as Fiesta Key. All the 
fish we love to fish for, permit, bonefish, tarpon, sailfish, marlin, all of them, they all live in really extreme locations. The sun's super strong, and it's really super critical that you take care of yourself, you take care of your skin. I'm not a big fan of chemical sunscreens. I personally, I would just rather cover up. There's a couple of companies out there right now that are making some great products, really help us to do that. One product, Buff, everybody knows this product now. I found it a long time ago, and this thing is just basically a, a sleeve that goes over your neck, covers up your head and face. I'll put on a hat, sunglasses. The Buff comes up right here, and it's gonna do all kinds of things. It's gonna block out light on the side. It's gonna cover up my face, my neck. I can just kind of keep it on, on my neck all day and uh, then you can pull it up and cover your face. It also helps you to see into the water. One of the things that I've found this year is this, this Hook Tri-Blend shirt. It's my favorite t-shirt. I really prefer to wear a short sleeve shirt out on the water, but I have to be very, very careful that I'm gonna be able to protect my arms. So instead of just covering up with sunscreen, Buff's now come out with these arm sleeves which are really super easy to just, I'll just put them in my pocket. When I feel that sun coming on strong, I'm just gonna take these arm sleeves and put them on here like this, be able to wear a short sleeve shirt. And at the end of the day, if I wanna just pull them off real easy, no problem. They're gonna come off, put, go in my pocket for the next day. I can go back to wearing a short sleeve shirt. So go check out the new Buff arm sleeves, check out their line of hats, and of course, the original products for keeping yourself super safe in the sun. K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Yeti, built for the wild. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Hook, performance fishing. Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. And by Costa, Power Pole, Ameritrail, B&W Trailer Hitches, and Live Water Sports. Hey, you wanna see more saltwater experience? Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and don't forget to check us out on Waypoint TV. You can watch full-length episodes anytime. I was curious to see what, what you could do with a permit there, because I've never landed one. Right. You gave it a fighting chance. That was pretty cool, and, and, and uh, after you got your permit fix in there, <laughs> You know, I was like, all right, well, you know, let's, let's try these glass. That's, uh, you know, I'd seen them down there, knew they were there. Um, we had we had got some live lobster. My kids and I had been out catching them earlier in the week, and, and we had a few lobster in, in the pen there that I had to save just for you. Um, so we had live bait there. We had some mullet that you caught off the dock earlier. I mm -hmm. uh, figured we could try to catch one of these glass, and, and uh, we pulled up there. The water was nice and clear at the at the time because the uh, current had just finished coming in, mm -hmm. and uh, we pulled up there, and, and we could actually see them on the bottom. Here comes one. See him coming out. Yep. He's looking at it. He is looking at it. He just, did he eat it? Yeah, he just ate it. He took you under that thing. No, he dropped it. Looked to me like he... You see him come out? Not the biggest ones in the world, which with Goliath Group, or a lot of times that gets you pretty excited because, you know, the biggest one is going to be possibly too big to handle around structure. So looking down there, seeing a 120 pounder, great. I think we can catch that fish. Okay. Got a bite. There he is. He's got me around the thing. What do I need to do? Go a little bit go forward. Away. Go at him or away? I don't think we need to go away. I think I got to get over there. It's all over or something. He's got my line all in there. Go in there? Yeah, we got to go over there. Line's in something. Feel it. I'm gonna have to just kind of feel it around and see if I can get it out. I mean, that was the game. He's gonna bite it and he's gonna get right back up in there. And I've seen what it looks like under there. I mean, it is a gnarled mess. Yeah. They're actually hiding under what, what was a framework of where they were building that bridge. There was this, this mold, this metal mold that's all um, kind of gone out like this now and it's just got this giant cave. And you can go way up under there and I know that's where he was trying to get. I'm just gonna let him see if he'll swim out. On this one, 
I did the old grouper trick where, you know, it happens all the time when you're grouper fishing, they, they rock you up, they run into a hole. And uh, an old trick, it's very similar to the, to the permit thing, is, is you open your bail and take all pressure off of them. And eventually that fish is gonna back out of that hole. And uh, if you give it a second, and then you check it, reel that in, and all of a sudden that fish has moved back out to a feeding station. Got it. Yeah, nice job, there he is. Nice job, dude. Going back again. I'm not going to let him get him there. Oh, what a good job. For the Goliath grouper, you know, once he starts up, that, that's it. So well, that was awesome, man. You finally got him up there. I mean, that was a nice size, um, you know, manageable, uh, you know, to get out of yeah. that structure. Yeah. Uh, you know, but man, what a what a cool fish! Big old mouth. Uh, Predator. You know, just just an eating machine. Oh, <laughs> good job, dude. Look at that, barely in the mouth. It's work getting him out of there, man. That was patience, huh? I wish your permit had come out like that. You know, what's cool about that is, is you know, total catch and release. That nobody's been able to kill a Goliath grouper for, for many, many years now. The populations are coming back in huge numbers, and, and they're available in a lot of different areas. And there's a good population living on, on almost every structure that you can find now. It's like a giant largemouth bass on a shiner. That's cool. It's a little bigger shiner and a little bigger bass. Now that is an eating machine thing is made, made to eat. Nice. There he goes. Okay. Woo! Nice work getting him out of there, man. Yeah. I'll try that again, coming. man. 